Welcome back. In this video lesson, we're going to talk about feeding for weight gain in your horse. Now, how do you determine if your horse is underweight? There are a couple of different methods. First, you can just use a weight tape and get a body weight on your horse and then compare that to breed averages to get an idea if your horse is in that normal range. Ideally, though, you would want to body condition score your horse because that is the best way to determine condition or fat deposition on the horse's body. Now, when we talk about body condition, in this course, we're going to use the Henneke body condition scoring system. It's a one to nine point system that's pretty much the gold standard used around the world. Now, the ideal body condition score for a horse is generally considered five. So when you look at this horse on this slide, ribs aren't visible, a little bit of fat on the rib cage, smooth neck, shoulders, a level back, and then slight fat on the tail head. Now, when we look at horses under a body condition score of five, this is generally what you would see. Now, a body condition score of one, that's an extreme scenario. This is a rescue horse. They have to go through a careful refeeding program. So not going to address that here, but more of these underweight horses that you see in a body condition score of two, three, four. You can see in these images, the tail heads prominent. You can see they look ribby, uh, bones of the hips. All of that is used to evaluate the body condition score. And you can see these horses we would consider underweight. And then how do we adjust their diets so we can try to get them to that ideal five? So in step one, you have to identify and dress why this horse is underweight. Now, there are many different factors. And ideally, you always want to work with your veterinarian if you do have an underweight horse, because some of these conditions can be health related like dental issues, uh, they could their gut health could be off, they could be having some sort of parasite infection, chronic disease, injuries, things like that, that can contribute that your veterinarian needs to evaluate your animal for treatment. But then you also have factors, certain breeds of horses, we call them hard keepers, they just tend to lose weight easier than say other breeds. So that could be a factor with their genetics. Age can be a contributing factor as horses get older. Uh, they tend to have dental problems, things like that that can contribute or a health history. Then when you look at environmental, you know, during cold times of the year, especially winter, depending on where you live, that could cause the horse to expend more energy to thermoregulate so they could drop weight. Any stressors, moving to a new facility, trailering, or even just increasing their exercise can contribute to a horse losing weight. And then you have those social factors. You know, are they in a new herd or are they the uh, subordinate animal to a more dominant horse? So not only, not so much stress, but maybe the other horse is running them off their feed which typically happens in herd situations. So you want to identify if any of these are contributing, then start looking at the diet and see how you can make changes to encourage weight gain. So that leads into step two, what's your goal? And you know how quickly do you want this horse to gain weight? And then you're gonna formulate a plan on how to get them to reach this goal. So for an example, in this discussion, we're going to go taking this horse from a body condition score of four to five. Their ideal weight is that 500 kilogram, 1100 pound horse. So when we look at establishing our goals, we can do this over a period of months. Now, if we want them to gain that weight quickly, then over a period of two months, we would have to greatly increase the amount of calories they're being fed each day. Or we can do this more slower, you know, down to six months where the calorie increase doesn't have to be that dramatic. So we're going to kind of talk you through this and show you a couple different options on how to achieve those goals. So step three, 
like always, it starts with forage. And when you're choosing your forage, you can look at the nutrient content. And when we look at specifically calories, because we want to increase the energy in the diet and the calories in what we're feeding them, you can see that mature hay. Again, this is that hay that's prickly, stemmy, uh, less blades on the grass or less leaves on uh, the alfalfa or legume plants. And you can see, you know, in a maintenance diet, that's just above their calorie requirements. That average hay, so maybe that mid-maturity hay, you can see where those calories go up. That nutrient-dense hay, so this is going to be your grass alfalfa mix. You can see the, the calorie boost there. And then pasture, you know, pasture is a, a, a great way where it's more energy dense and they'll eat more as they go. So looking at that nutrient dense hay, again, just to remind you what you're looking for, soft, soft stems, soft blades in the grass. You don't want to see any seed heads, the alfalfa, you want to see uh, leafy, those leaves are soft and you don't want to see any flowers. Okay. So that's your nutrient dense haze that you want to look for. Now that's the forage. Now, how else can we help this horse gain weight? So we're going to go from the, the two extremes. We got the six months, which is the slower route route or the two months, which is quicker. So at maintenance, if we just had the hay, and again, reminder, we have those gaps in those minerals and vitamins. So we'll need to address that with a vitamin mineral mix. But if we want to do this a little bit slower over six months, very easily, we can add some oil and then beet pulp, which is highly fermentable in the hindgut of the horse. And that's a good carrier for the oil. And then we want to add that vitamin mineral mix, which is omneity here in this example. Now, if we want to accelerate this and do this over two months, we're going to have to make further adjustments. So we want to provide them an average hay, okay, as much as they want, put them out on pasture. So again, they're eating as much as they want all day long. We're going to include the beet pulp. We're going to increase the amount of oil. We always have that omneity, that vitamin mineral mix, which is very important. And then we'll add some oats, which again is highly digestible in the small intestine. So if you want to see what that looks like in table form, here you go. So in the maintenance diet, free choice, average hay, omni 120 grams per day. Again, covering all those gaps in the vitamins and minerals. With the slow gain over six months, we're just going to feed in this example, 1.4 kilograms of beet pulp or three pounds. We're going to add 200 milliliters or seven ounces of oil. And again, we have the vitamin mineral mix. That rapid gain, we're going to give them free choice on the grass pasture. Then we're going to increase the oil to 440 milliliters or 15 ounces. Okay, so that's going to increase the energy required to get that horse to gain weight quicker. Step five, monitor your horse. Monitor them over time. About every two weeks, you, you can go back and either use the weight tape, you want a body condition, score them again. One thing I always advise is use your phones. Everybody's carrying around cell phones. Take pictures of your horse over time to see if you can identify those changes and see if that horse is putting on weight. Now, some other considerations, especially, we, you know, there's so many different reasons why a horse may be underweight. You may want to soak the hay to make it softer, especially for these horses that have dental issues, but be aware that could reduce palatability. But if they're having a really hard time chewing, that's something you may consider. Or, you know, especially in those severe cases of dental issues, you replace the hay with mashes of beet pulp, soy holes, or complete feeds that the horse can um, easily masticate and swallow. Feed hay in raised nets or feeders, especially for horses that might have some pain in, in their necks or other skeletal muscle injuries, that it's easier for them to get at their forage uh, and eating. Or you may even want to add a, a gut health supplement that supports digestion. Some other considerations, 
Uh, make sure, again, deworming plan. Uh, they don't have a parasite infection. Any pain that could cause a horse not wanting to move or not wanting to eat, you definitely want to address that with your veterinarian. Uh, improved footing. Sometimes we don't even think about it, that the footing around our feeders or where we feed them is a little unsteady for them and, and they're a little cautious. So that may reduce intake. And especially for these Animals that are subordinate in a herd or they have a more dominant pen mate or, uh, you know, dominance in the herd that they might run off. These subordinate horses, you know, it's always a good idea to feed them separately so they have the peace, quiet, and time to eat their meals. But again, you know, just kind of starting to summarize some of this, health concerns, always address those first and then gradual adjustments to the diet. Remember, you want to do that over a period of two to three weeks. You don't want to do this the next day. So make those gradual uh, changes. Monitor that horse over time to make sure they are putting on weight. Body condition score them every two weeks. Take those pictures. Work with a qualified nutritionist, you know, especially, you know, with any issues you have with your horses and their diets. You know, it's, a, it's an excellent source of information and understand that, you know, a four, four and a half, we see this in our high performance horses, our growing horses. So have that understanding too, that they may not be able to be at that ideal five, but four, four and a half, you tend to see in these really high performance horses. So we're going to continue on this discussion with some other scenarios, but overall it doesn't have to be these drastic dramatic changes to put weight on a horse you can just add some things that are easy to put in a feed bucket and really encourage your horses to gain weight while addressing all of those factors that we discussed so take care <music>